Welcome back to Goliath, my name is Chris Camel, and today we're going over what I'm calling a $2 geofence. Uh, and this brings together a lot of different features that we've been working on at Goliath, and some third-party features as well. Bringing it all together from hardware all the way up. And so this is something I actually showed off in a Friday live stream a couple weeks ago, but I thought I should make this a separate video. So where does the $2 come from? First off, let's talk about um, where that, that price comes from. And that actually comes from this. This is the Ayudel Elixir, but really more specifically the ESP32 C3 that's on board here. We are mostly doing all of our processing on the NRF9160, which is the cellular modem, and it does have GPS, right? So it's important to note that you, know, you could get GPS off of this thing, but it's not the only way that you can get location. And often if you're inside, like I am right now, I'm in my lab, uh, you don't, if you don't have you know, a clear shot of the sky, you don't always get a GPS without a, a fancy antenna setup. So instead, I said, well, we could use some of the, the stuff. This is really a third way to get location. One is uh, with the LTEM, we can grab the, the cell tower data. With the GPS, we can, uh, we can go and get the GPS directly off uh, in using, using the front end here and pull that off. And the third one is, using the ESP-AT firmware that we have on the ESP32C3 here. And this is a $2 module. That's really where that, that price comes from. And that's, uh, let's, I guess, see what it looks like in practice. You'll only see the top side of this, but this is, uh, this is the Eliodel Elixir inside a case with a large uh, antenna and a battery going here. Uh, and so this thing is actually transmitting right now over cellular, but what it's doing is it's taking two things. One, it's taking the cell tower name uh, and then also and, and that's like an encoded thing and then also it's looking at all of the Wi-Fi networks that are actually that it can see right now and using those two things it actually uh, goes out and talks to an API service gets a latitude and longitude and sends it back to us so let's take a look at what that looks like in practice here um, so this is that thing let's go here there we go okay so first off this is uh, this is the device that's actually transmitting and this one is, you can see it's sending data right now on our new, uh, our somewhat newer usage uh, interface here. You can see that. But really you could see this as well. You could see that I'm sending LTE, CID, MCC, MCN, MNC. I actually don't know what all these are, but ultimately these are measurements that the cell modem is seeing of the closest tower. And then we have to see, also start to see this. This is the MAC addresses and the relative uh, signal strength of them. And using those two things together, we can actually publish these to the Goliath and then push them back out um, using pipelines. Pipelines, if you don't know, pipelines basically are a way to retransmit data out to third-party services. And we can do that based on uh, it, it, uh, filtering as well. So if you go into the prod webhook here as well, you see that I'm only actually passing through uh, topics that are being sent to the Wi-Fi LTE location request, right? So I'm actually publishing to that on, uh, you actually don't see that here. You don't actually see the topic name because that's being pushed from the device itself. But ultimately it is, uh, it is pushing uh, all of the, any, any data it sees on LightDB coming in, it actually pushes out to LightDB stream. That's a different pipeline I have going in. And then anything that's on this Wi-Fi LTE location request, uh, it sends out as a webhook to this, uh, this destination here. And this is N8N is a, API marketplace where we can go and see where this, uh, we can go and gather data. We can then uh, tie into different API services and ultimately send stuff back in. So let's take a look at what N8N looks like now. Okay, so the first thing is this trigger here. And so this is actually when the pipeline is being triggered from Goliath. It actually is calling a webhook and sending it to this N8N endpoint with my API key that I created. Then ultimately it's taking that data that's already formatted to work well with the here.com API. Uh, if I go in here, should be able to see it. And you see that we're pulling in uh, all of our different LAN WLAN addresses based, or MAC addresses. One thing I should call out here is that we had to rework um, the ESP-8 firmware. So some of the, the Wi-Fi scan stuff in Zephyr was not natively working. So our um, one of our engineers went and rewrote that so that he was pulling out Mac, Mac IDs and signal strength instead because it was doing the actual like plain text SSIDs like of the, the Wi-Fi networks you might see on your phone or on your tablet. Uh, ultimately though, we wanted Mac, ad Mac address, we wanted uh, signal strength, and then we also wanted LTE in case 
in case it doesn't recognize any of these WLAN um, access points, right? So if it actually doesn't, you know, if I go to a brand new place and nobody's ever been there before, but there are access points, it's actually the, the API is not going to really send back anything interesting. And so I think if we hit test step, yep, so this actually sends back, and it sends back latitude, longitude, and accuracy. These are um, things that we're gonna actually then go and pass back to the device itself. So we basically say, okay, we've got the location data coming in from, from our device. That's both 10 MAC addresses and LTE tower information. We're sending it out to here.com API. We're getting a response that's latitude, longitude, and uh, uh, accuracy. So like basically the circle, think about the circle, how on uh, maybe your Google Maps, or your Apple Maps. And then this is just some testing whether or not it actually works properly. If it does work, if, it, we, if we get a, a expected uh, response here. Then what we do is we actually go and we take this location and then we uh, we do some processing on it and we then go and check it against our uh, our center lat and center long. And those two things are basically what is determining those two with the radius are basically determining a geofence. A geofence is basically when you have, uh, if you can imagine you have a cat tracker and you want to know that Fluffy is staying within 500 meters of your house, well, that's fine. You basically would set up, uh, you know, kind of drop a pin on the latitude longitude that's central to your house. You then say, if Fluffy leaves the 500 meter radius of, of the house, then I want you to do something with that. Uh, and so that's ultimately what we're doing here. You actually have to go and uh, this is some generated code that I, I pulled off a chat GPT. So, you know, no real value here for this sort of thing. I am also not super well versed with, uh, JavaScript, so I was learning learning some new things there. Uh, but ultimately, I'm taking this data in, I'm processing it, I'm actually doing some math based on the radius of the Earth <laughs> and how latitude and longitude is calculated, and then saying if uh, you know if point if the point that I'm currently at is outside of the the circle of the the geofence of that I first created the 500 500 meters around around that latitude longitude, then I'm going to do something with that. So if we go back here. So now if I go back to the canvas, when we are outside the geofence, I just do a little logical test here. And if we do true, then we send it to Slack. And this is just any kind of alerting mechanism you might have. You know, this could be a Twilio SMS. It could be an email. It could be a phone call. It could be, you know, a wide range of different third-party services where Goliath doesn't have a you know, text messaging service built in, but that's because things like Twilio are great at that sort of thing. And you could just call an API using something like N8N uh, and then you could push that data out there. So what we're really looking at here is we're looking at uh, Wi-Fi based locationing using a third party API service like here.com. We're then uh, bringing that data back into the device itself. Um, and whether or not you need to actually bring it all the way back down to the device is arguable. Um, I like to do it because if I was testing and had a GPS antenna on here as well, I could basically say, I have my kind of less accurate Wi-Fi based location, but then when I have GPS, I actually just switch over to that. And then the device is deciding, right? So I basically take the initial Wi-Fi access points, my LTE uh, tower name and information. I go out to here.com. I push the data back here. So it has an approximate latitude, longitude and accuracy. I then uh, am able to make the decision on whether I want to report that or GPS. And I could do that on a, a different, uh, light DB stream topic, right? Or a different stream topic rather. So dot S slash instead of Wi-Fi LTE lat um, <laughs> location request, it might be, uh, it might just be location, right? That might be the, the name of that, of that uh, output there. And then I could push that to third-party services using something like NAN. I might want to push that out to a third-party app platform just using a different pipeline. Uh, or I might want to take the initial data there, like the the one when I was getting the here.com API data. And I wanna just do some immediate processing on it because I wanna do some locationing based on that. So what we've seen here is a full circle of Wi-Fi and cell tower information using a third party API service, pulling that data back, doing some processing on it, and then ultimately setting up alerts and pushing that out. This is showcasing a lot of Goliath features. It's showcasing our pipelines, which is super powerful. You can really slice and dice your data. You can do transformations as you need to as well. And we're really excited about all the things this is going to enable. 
So if you have any questions, you can always head over to forum.goliath.io. Thanks for watching.